Hi there, I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey and welcome to an update on a fairly substantial earthquake that occurred yesterday on July 18th in South America and there's some interesting uh, analysis and data to look at associated with this earthquake. So I thought I'd do just a quick update to let you know some of the things I've been looking at and just discover this earthquake a little bit together. So there was a magnitude 7.4 quake which is quite large it's the biggest one to hit Chile since 2016 uh, and it occurred in this area here right near where, where Chile Bolivia and Argentina uh, where those three countries uh, share a common border so in sort of the northern half of Chile remarkably this earthquake although quite large in magnitude did not produce any sort of damage, for substantial damage or injuries or fatalities that we've heard of just yet. Still kind of early, of course, uh, but it looks like for the most part this earthquake, although quite large in magnitude, didn't cause much damage. And I want to look at the reasons why to some degree. So here's the earthquake's location here. Let's switch over to uh, the USGS site and show you the location of the earthquake. You can see the big blue dot here. Some of these other small dots here are some of the aftershocks that have occurred there. So there's again the location of the earthquake in this dry arid portion uh, of the Atacama Desert. Also pretty much along the axes of the Andes Mountains. You can see all these bumps here uh, that look like uh, just all oh, these mountains, these volcanoes, um, right along the crest of the Andes Mountains here in western South America. So let's bump over to the data for the USGS quake and maybe start a bit with why this earthquake occurred where it did. So if you know a little bit about this portion of South America, and let me switch to a different um, a little different map here that might make it a little bit easier. We have a plate here. This is the Nazca plate, this oceanic plate, and this is all the South American plate. And the Nazca plate is moving to the east and colliding with and subducting or shoving itself beneath uh, the western margin of the South American plate. So that's the reason why we have earthquakes in this region of South America. It's also the reason we have the volcanoes there as well. It's a very dynamic region geologically um, because of this plate boundary that extends from Colombia up into near the tip of South America. So the entire western margin of South America is dominated by this type of plate boundary. So the plate boundary is a big important role. When we look at earthquakes, and the first thing I looked at when I heard, I got an alert on my phone that indicated that this large earthquake had occurred, uh, the very first thing I look at is the uh, not just the magnitude but the depth and so notice here that the depth of this earthquake about 120 kilometers down if we round off that's about 70 miles or so uh, it was fairly deep and while we've had earthquakes here in the past the most destructive earthquakes along this type of plate boundary and in Chile have been the ones closer to the coastline so not as far inland as this one the ones closer to the coastline um, that also sometimes produce tsunami this earthquake although large enough to have produced a tsunami is located inland so of course it did not generate any sort of tsunami out in the ocean um, so we have a couple things here and one important thing I want to get to here in a second but here's just sort of the shake map so these colors here uh, surrounding the epicenter which is the star there just show the levels of shaking that occurred throughout the region so we can see there was actually uh, quite a bit of shaking that occurred over a pretty broad region so from the coast at Antofagasta uh, all the way into Argentina and into southwestern Bolivia uh, this entire region felt you know level six or so shaking up to level seven on the intensity scale so strong to very strong shaking but on the damage scale it's pretty light to moderate and um, knowing what a little bit I know about Chile they're actually one of the better countries in the world in terms of earthquake preparedness uh, buildings that are resistant to uh, seismic waves to the best degree possible so um, a couple things that were helpful here I think are that the earthquake was in a largely uninhabited largely uninhabited area up here in the high deserts of the Andes Mountains so there's not a lot of cities or towns or infrastructure in this region there are a few mines up here um, different ore deposits that they mine um, but not a lot of people living in the region and so that was a big reason why we didn't have any sort of uh, widespread damage in the area and then also the depth of this earthquake so as those size as seismic energy is moving up towards the surface it's dissipating a little bit and so the deeper the earthquake 
the less it will be felt typically at the surface, all things being equal. And the shallower earthquakes, those tend to be a lot more destructive. And then I think the last thing here before I get to my drawing that I wanted to share with you was, um, and for some of you this is a fun little running joke, but remember that whenever we have an earthquake, uh, one of the first things that's generated is what's called a fault plane solution, or sometimes it's called a, a moment tensor solution, or informally these are called beach balls. And so the, this is what kind of uh, caught my attention right off the bat was, you know, the magnitude, the depth of the earthquake. But then when I looked at the fault plane solution, um, this is the solution for a normal fault. And normal faults, you might remember, are caused by extension, so by sh rocks being stretched apart. Of course, here along the west coast of South America, we have a subduction zone. We have two plates colliding, and so you would think that the dominant stress producing the earthquakes and the fault activity would be compression. And that is true. Most of the faults that we have, and most of the earthquakes we have in this part of the world are caused by the two plates colliding and the compression. And so it was interesting to see that there was an extensional uh, fault, a normal fault solution, um, beach ball, that was associated with this earthquake. So let me switch over to my little camera here and see if I can explain this in a little bit more detail. So what I've drawn for you here, uh, let me get that kind of straight, there we go, is um, we have the earthquake occurring right here um, at depth. So here's the Nazca plate colliding with the South American plate. Here's the ocean here. Here's the, the trench uh, that marks the actual uh, plate boundary between the two. And you can see the two plates in collision here. And the Nazca plate being the denser oceanic plate subducts beneath the South American plate. And because it's bending, because it's actually bending as it dives deeper and deeper, um, it's kind of like bread dough rising when you bake bread you get that kind of those extensional cracks along the top crust of the bread and so this earthquake here at this depth of about 120 kilometers is an internal quake it's actually happening inside the Nazca plate as a result of the bending so as the plate dives deeper and deeper and bends um, that can generate earthquakes sometimes large sometimes small and so this was the actual location here um, so th there's the focus. The epicenter would, of course, be straight above it somewhere here. And that's just a little bit um, to the west of the Andes Mountains here. So I drew the, the little, little bits of magma coming up, feeding the Andes, volcanoes. Uh, you can see the thicker crust here. And then the location uh, f from the earthquake to the trench, the actual plate boundary collision here, is something on the order of 370 kilometers or about 230 miles. You can also see that... Um, Normally when we have bigger earthquakes here and the ones that are more destructive, they tend to be in this zone here where the collision between these two plates occurs. This generates the largest earthquakes on the planet, sometimes up to magnitude 9. Um, and this is also what can generate uh, uplift and create a tsunami along the coastline. So. Um, anyway, so hopefully that's kind of helpful. Just wanted to let you know we had this fairly large earthquake in South America, but it is um, largely, there's a few news stories out there. I think I, I caught one uh, here, you know, ABC News, you know, no reports of major damage. So it is in the news a little bit if you know where to look and you're hunting for it, but it's not a big uh, news item right now because we had, thankfully, uh, no reports so far of injuries or damage. Um, because it's a deeper quake. Uh, deeper quakes don't cause as much damage and it occurred in a pretty isolated area. But nonetheless, a very large earthquake. Had this same earthquake occurred um, maybe, you know, s you know, over here at Antofagasta along the coast, um, you know, somewhere over here. So move this earthquake over uh, 120, 100 kilometers or so and have it be much more shallow than it was, uh, this would have been a much bigger deal and we would have been dealing with a lot more uh, probably injuries, fat possibly fatalities, and just damage in general. So just a quick update on this earthquake. Thanks again for your support of the channel. Hopefully that was helpful and gave you a little bit of uh, knowledge and just something to learn. Thanks so much. Take care.